I don't want to spend 11 years in prison. I'll probably, I would die there. I, I wouldn't be able to make it. Hi guys, my name is Matthew. And out of desperation, I am reaching out to the teams at Social Catfish. My sister has recently been the victim of a romance scam. She's recently been arrested as being part of this whole scam. What's up, Seekers? Welcome back to another episode of Scamfish, sponsored by SocialCatfish.com. Things are not going well for me. I'm scared to death. I mean, it's a it's a, a felony charge of theft of a, of, a, of twenty six thousand dollars. It's eleven years in prison plus a, a fine. You know, if you have any insights, any guidance or direction that you could provide us, um, like I say, we're desperate. Today's episode is different. Join us as we delve into the story of Janine, who fell in love with a man named Rick. Who she met on Facebook. However, their love story has taken a troubling twist after Janine allegedly received a $26,000 wire transfer from Rick that would help the two connect in person. Janine is now facing a 10-year prison sentence. This situation highlights the harsh consequences that can follow in the wake of a romance scam. Join us as we explore ways to support Janine and shed light on this dark aftermath of deceptive love. Real quick guys, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Your comment and like could help stop someone from being scammed. Let's get into it. I'm from a very small town in Michigan called Grand Haven. I have six children and 11 grandchildren. I haven't had a relationship since my divorce in 1994. So I've been alone and raising my children and, and working all that time. And my ex-husband decided he wanted a younger woman. So he um, ended up marrying a friend of mine and they were married for over 20 years, I think. It's been very difficult. I didn't date online at all before I met this man. All of a sudden he was just there talking to me. You know, it was maybe every couple of days and then it turned out to be more like every day. And well, his name is Rick Alexander. He has a great smile. He has beautiful eyes. He's got mostly gray hair. I guess some people would call it salt and pepper. He has a mustache and at times he's had a beard usually just jeans and a t-shirt type of thing or a polo shirt. Now, my perspective on this relationship is from the beginning, it's been a scam. Well, he just told me that he was in Iraq rebuilding the roads after the war. His wife died several years ago. He doesn't have any children, he said. He was very always very respectful when he spoke with me didn't swear. He didn't belittle me or call me dumb or stupid or anything like that. He was always, you know, very respectful. You know, just things like that. He he just made me feel good. He would say my love. I once told him I really liked it when he called me that. We had an what I call an easy relationship. I mean, it was easy to talk to him. In the beginning, Rick came off as the perfect guy. He claimed he was trying to leave Iraq soon so they could finally meet in person, but he would need her help. He was set to come home last winter and there was a big snowstorm in Turkey and all of the flights were canceled. He's tried to come home a couple of times and for one reason or another, he hasn't. And there have been times he's told me it's dangerous for him to be there. I didn't want a long distance relationship. I wanted someone that was going to be here and be part of my life. So a couple of times I have said, look, I'm done. I, I don't want a long distance relationship. I want somebody that's here that is going to be part of my life. And this is it. We're not, I'm not talking anymore. He just wants to, according to Rick, he just wants to be together. He told me he loved me. The relationship took a turn when Rick began to ask Janine for money to get home. The first time he asked me for money was he needed money so he could buy a, a phone card type thing so he could call me. I sent him an Apple card. 
Well, of course, he said, thank you. And I and he used it to call me. The second time he asked me for money was in order to try to pay for a ticket to come home. You know, he knew I was on Social Security and, and that I only got paid once a month. So, um, you know, I couldn't always send a lot of money. And it was never enough for a ticket. Anywhere from 100 to maybe four or 500 at a time. The government said that they had him on a list and they were going to get him a ticket. But then they told him he needed to have so much cash in hand so when he got on the plane and got to America, he would have money. Maybe one month I'd send him two or three hundred dollars and then the next month I'd send him some more so that he would have the money that they required of him. I may have sent him over the two year period, gosh, maybe six or seven thousand dollars of my own money. Little did Janine know what Rick was going to ask her to do would land her in trouble with the law. At one point, he sent me twenty six thousand dollars. And he said that was to help me pay the bills that I had because I sent him money. And he asked me to, to, you know, use some of it to pay my bills and then send the rest of it to a person in Turkey. And that that person in Turkey would get them tickets to come home. She was pulled over by a state trooper for having, I think it was a, a broken tail light. And he ran her place, ran her ID and found out there was a warrant for her arrest. She knew nothing about that. Well, immediately they arrested her, impounded her car. They extradited her from Michigan to Maryland, where she remained incarcerated for several weeks and then was extradited back to Michigan. Someone had given me $26,000 to pay for airplane parts to send to Maryland to this woman. I've never talked to a woman about airplane parts. I don't know anything about airplane parts. So she is filing, has filed charges against me for stealing this money from her. And I, again, I don't know who she is. It's no one I've ever talked to, but she said that I took the money that she sent me and didn't send her the airplane parts. I didn't receive any money from her. It came from Rick. I didn't keep a dime of it. I sent it all to Turkey. She was an unwitting participant in this whole thing. She didn't accept any money. She didn't pocket any money for herself. She was duped into this, but she's looking at real jail time. And again, at her age and her health condition, she will not do well in prison. Things are not going well for me. I'm scared to death. I mean, it's a it's a, a felony charge of theft of, a, of, a, of $26,000. It's 11 years in prison plus a, a fine. I don't want to spend 11 years in prison. I'll probably, I would die there. I, I wouldn't be able to make it. So I'm scared to death. It makes me sick to my stomach every time I think about it. I don't want to see my sister spend the, the last uh, few years of her life um, in prison. And, uh, you know, if she goes to prison, uh, she's not going to last long given her condition. And it's ruined my life. I mean, my children aren't speaking to me because of it. And, um, you know, it's a very difficult thing. After receiving Matthew's email about his sister being in trouble, we hopped on a video call with her to get an idea of what we could help her with. After facing jail time, we thought for sure she knew that this Rick guy was scamming her. Hop on with you because your brother reached out to us and just kind of see where your head's at as far as this guy you've met online. Uh, I know you've been through so much and I want to hear more and just see where we can take this. Okay. Do you still believe you're talking to this, to the real man? Honestly, I don't know. <laughs> I'm hoping so, but I don't really know. What makes you feel like you could be talking to him? He just makes me feel good. He, he tells me he loves me. He seems to want to take care of me. Do you love him? Uh, I hate to admit it, but yes, I do. We've been talking for almost two years, so, you know, there's a lot of water under the bridge. After everything you've been through, though, right, you still want to hold on to this guy? Well, kind of, yeah. Right now, he's saying that he's coming home. I don't know if he actually will, but that's what he tells me.
and he tells me that he loves me and that he'll take care of me and that everything's going to be all right. And I want to believe him. I really do. Now, can you tell me what exactly is he saying about the arrest and your charges? He's saying that they're, that what they're saying is that he had nothing to do with it. But he is saying that he'll be home to go to Maryland with me and get me out of it. Janine's brother, Matthew, originally reached out to us. He had no idea she was still communicating with Rick. We then hopped on a call with him to let him know. We spoke to your sister. Not only is she still communicating with him, but she also believes that he's real. It's a little insane. We need to act fast as possible. It's, it, absolutely. We'll send a list of things that we're going to need, and then, you know, we can start looking into this ASAP. Fantastic. Again, I appreciate yeah. you both so much, the whole team. We had Matthew pull as much information as we could from Janine. Then we started to look into things. We needed to prove to her that this guy was a complete scam. But as we researched, Janine disappeared. She wasn't answering our phone calls, emails, or texts. Even Matthew tried to reach out to her, and he couldn't get a hold of her. If you've made it this far, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, guys. We appreciate you so much. We waited a week and didn't hear anything back from Janine. We decided to contact Matthew and try to catch up and figure out what was going on. We've been trying to contact Janine for a while now and she's just not getting back in touch with us. Likewise, um, I've reached out to her on a number of occasions. I did get a cryptic message from her yesterday, uh, but that's the first one I've received in a week. But um, yeah, I apologize that it's it's been so difficult. She sent you a cryptic message. What, what do you mean? Like, how so? Well, she mentioned that she's in the shelter. And then she sent me uh, another message that she misses the cops. I, I don't know what she meant by that. Uh, that's what concerned me, that maybe she was in jail again, has not been checking her email or her messenger, and wasn't aware that we had an appointment scheduled for last week. and. You know, I'm, I'm frustrated by the whole thing. Um, there are a bunch of people who are trying to help her and she just doesn't seem to want to help herself. Yeah, that's a, that's a tough situation to be in. Do you think maybe you'd be able to give her a call? Absolutely, sure. Do you think she would answer? I can certainly give her a try. Do you want me to do that now? Yeah, let's give her a call. Sorry, no luck. That's okay, I really appreciate you trying. We actually have some information we wanted to go over with her. What we can do is we can attach a report, send it to you, and then maybe you can go over these things with her. I mean, let's just get into the searches we ran, right? I want to start off with the passport, and I'm also curious, do you know the story behind the reason why Rick would send this to her? My understanding is that she was going to book tickets for him. And so she needed his passport to do that. Got it. Okay. So we found an exact match for this passport. This image matches a sample passport. We found it on a Polish passport uh, website that sells these passports. It's a questionable website, but everything in the image matches 100%. The numbers, everything matches. The only thing that, that is different or has been changed is the image and the name. The next thing we want to look at is, you know, the image of Rick. We found several profiles on social media uh, with different names, same image. And we finally found his identity and his real name is Carlos. And he's a blogger, he's a social media content creator. Something else that we had found was that he does indeed have a, a boyfriend. So he is currently in a relationship. Okay, very interesting. And we found many fake profiles of him all over the internet. He's a known face when it comes to romance scams. Uh, usually when you find a guy that, that's been used once, he's been used 30 to 100 to sometimes thousands of times. So uh, your sister is not the only person being scammed by his fake profiles. He's just a regular guy with a with a normal life. 
Um, he lives overseas and, you know, he just happens to be a good looking, handsome guy that that's used in scams. Well, again, I'm not not surprised, um, but it is comforting, I guess, to know um, the truth. And I can't tell you how much I appreciate the efforts that you guys have put in, uh, you know, for this. It was our pleasure. We, we want to help you out any way we can, as well as Janine. You know, um, obviously this is ongoing. So if she decides to reach out or she has some other information she would like to share, we're here for her. Well, thank you for saying that. I hoped you uh, would feel that way. She's calling. Should I put her on? Absolutely. Janine? Yeah. Hi. Um, I'm on a call with Hi. Drew and Bree. Uh, we're just... Drew and Bree from Social Catfish. We're just going over some of the information they found. Oh, okay. Um, it's really interesting I'm stuff. Um, I'm sorry? I have a show, and I have to make a show at 8 o'clock. Can you call me back when you have the information to tell me? Uh, yes, I can. Um, they would love to be able to speak with you. Last week, they tried a number of times to reach you through uh, email and, and I guess wow. other means. Is there any way that you're in the shelter and that makes it difficult yeah. for you? Okay. Are you able to leave the shelter during the day and, and uh, are you able to go somewhere where you could speak with them? Yeah, yeah. Well, even on a you know a park bench or someplace, um, you know. Yeah. So well, they're they're more than happy to re-engage. Uh, again, they found some really interesting information. It's limited uh, because they weren't able to get more information from you, uh, which they hope to do last week. Um, but um, you know, again, if you can make the time to speak with them. They're more than happy to pursue this thing and gather additional information. Okay, well, why don't you call me back about 8.30 my time, well, 8.30 your time too, I guess, um, and let me know what they had to say. Perfect, perfect. I, I really think that would be uh, yep. beneficial for you. So, Okay, very good. All right, well, I'll follow up with you. Thanks. Bye-bye. Hello. Hi, Janine. How's it going? Good. How are you? Good. It's Bree. How are you? Good. I'm hanging in there. I um, I sent over your in-depth report to your email. Okay. Have you found anything out? Anything good? <laughs> I mean, we found the real man in the images. You were lied to. Okay. And his story is not real. Okay, well, right now my life is so up in the air. I'm homeless right now. I'm living in a shelter. So, um, you know, I don't even know which way is up right now. I'm sorry. But Hang in there. I'm trying. I really am. <laughs> so thank you so much for all your help. Absolutely. Let us know if you need anything. I will. Thank you so much, Bree. You have a good day. Bye-bye. You too. Bye. Thank you everyone for tuning in. Remember, all of our new videos go out every Wednesday, so please don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. All right, Seekers, we'll see you guys next time.